of 2017 has finally finished, having given us some great stuff, some middling stuff, and the other stuff. But today, we're gonna talk about the great stuff. Today I'm counting down my 10 favorite films from the past year. Now, little warning up front, there are some films I haven't seen yet from this year, mainly the Oscar films, cause all of those don't come out for a while where I live. So movies like Lady Bird, Shape of Water, Disaster Artist, Call Me By Your Name, The Post, I haven't seen them yet. When I have, I'll make a whole video on all of them, but that won't be until late February, so I wanted to talk about the other films of the year, now here at New Year's and all. There are also other films that might have made my list that I just didn't get the chance to see yet, like Coco, Logan Lucky, Wonder, Kong Skull Island, Jumanji, and It Comes at Night. But besides all that, I think I did pretty well. So enough intro, let's get to the list. Number 10, American Made. It was a tough choice for my number 10, because there were a few that I'm kind of sad couldn't make the main list. But in the end, I'm going with American Made. I feel like no one really talked about this film at all, which I find strange, because I thought it was pretty great. In a time where Tom Cruise movies are a little hit or miss, this was one of his best in a while. It's very fast paced and has an interesting, almost Wolf of Wall Street-like style that makes it very entertaining. And really, I was never bored while watching it. It's about a fascinating real life subject matter, and whether it handled it accurately, it handled it in a way that made it very engaging. Don't think a ton of people have seen this one, so I'd recommend checking it out. Yeah, uh -huh, you know what it is. Number 9, The Lego Batman Movie. Now, I've only seen this movie once, and a couple of people have told me that it doesn't hold up at all on the second watch, but I'm sorry. That first watch through was just so much fun for me. This is the most I've laughed in an animated film in a while. Sure, it's very heavy with the references and easter eggs and all that, and maybe that's not for everyone, but hey, this is subjective, and I thought that was funny as hell. Some people checked out by the time all these different characters showed up and all that, because it was too silly, but I enjoyed how meta and crazy it got. So yeah, as a Batman fan and a fan of funny movies, this is the best animated film of the year for me. Keeping in mind, I haven't seen Coco. Number 8, Dunkirk. This is one of those Oscar type films that I actually did get the chance to see. I mean, at this point, Christopher Nolan has a pretty bulletproof track record, for me at least, and this was another really impressive film from him. This is different from the type of stuff he's done before, and I really enjoyed it or enjoyed isn't really the right word. It's a harrowing and stressful experience, but I think it's a great film. Visually, it's stunning, the performances are great, it's extremely tense and extremely effective at conveying the horror and terror of the scenario. A lot of people drowning and almost drowning in this film, let me tell you. It's also easily the loudest film I've ever seen. Don't know if that's a positive or negative, just feel like it should be pointed out. Some people didn't like how the story was told in a different way from what you might expect, and the fact that you don't really get a lot of info about the characters, save for two or three, but I was fine with that. For me, this film was more to show the actual experience of this specific part of the war, and how people tried to survive, and it did that brilliantly. So yeah, it's gonna make my list. Number 7, Star Wars The Last Jedi. Now yeah, I know this is a somewhat controversial pick for my list. I am ready for the 50 comments complaining that this is above Dunkirk. Trust me. If you hated The Last Jedi, that's fine. If you loved The Last Jedi, that's also fine. It's weird that I even have to say that. I was one of the people who loved The Last Jedi. So number 7. I was thoroughly entertained through and through by the film. I thought it was more creative than the last. The action was awesome, there were some really great character moments, and while the story wasn't perfect, I still found it really interesting. A well-made Star Wars film that was a ton of fun. That's pretty much all I want from these as a pretty casual fan of the series. Number 6, John Wick Chapter 2. One of the reasons I love these John Wick films is that they're pretty much exactly the type of films that I always wanted to make when I was younger. Just, you know, considerably more violent than I imagined as an 8 year old. Straight ahead, super entertaining revenge action movies. And while the first is great, the second one stepped things up in a huge way. Besides the action, Keanu Reeves is perfect as this character. His style of acting absolutely fits this kind of action hero. The world is interesting, and the story is simple, but it totally works for kind of throwback to older action films. In terms of the action though, it's insane. You can tell these films are made by former stunt people. The action's mostly practical, it's shot so you can see it, it's brutal, it's just spectacular. These movies have the premise of classic older action films and the best action of today. It's a great combo and I can't wait for the third entry. Number 5, Spider-Man Homecoming. Yes, the only MCU film to make my top 10 this year. Which is not at all saying the other films are bad, it's just a testament to how great this year has been overall. This is my favorite Spider-Man film to date, and I really enjoyed some of these. It does everything a Spider-Man film should do, and it strikes the perfect balance of Spidey action type stuff, and Peter Parker high school type stuff. This one movie made me relate to and care more about Peter Parker than two Andrew Garfield movies could, and I'm sorry to say, even three Tobey Maguire movies could. 
I like those films, but I feel like this just did this character perfectly, and especially for 2017. This feels like a realistic high school with a realistic high schooler from today. This also has maybe the best MCU villain to date, some really cool action, and some hilarious moments. This might be the funniest MCU film of the year, which is tough to do when you're going up against Ragnarok and a Guardians film. Probably the biggest surprise of the year for me, I left this film totally satisfied. Number 4, Blade Runner 2049. It really sucks that this didn't do better at the box office, because this film was so fantastic. I mean, I expected a film this amazing from Denis Villeneuve at this point, and he delivered. Visually, this may be the most gorgeous film I've ever seen. Pretty much every shot in this is worthy of being printed off and framed. Beautiful movies can still be really bad though, but this film also has excellent performances, even from certain not super enthusiastic actors, a great soundtrack, and a complicated but fascinating and well-told story. Also, the world building in this film is some of the best you'll ever see. All the tech and buildings and all this stuff, it feels like a real world. It helps if you've seen the first, but I don't think it's really a necessity. Plus, I didn't at all feel the really long runtime. So, if you're one of the many people apparently who didn't see this in the cinema, definitely watch this at some point and on the biggest screen you can get. Number 3, Logan. This is one of the films I've talked about the most this year, so you might be sick of hearing about it. So hey, I'll keep this brief, but there is a reason I and everyone else have been talking about this so much. Honestly, I think this should get nominated for a bunch of Oscars. It almost definitely won't, because for some reason the Academy hates these kinds of films, but Best Picture, Best Actor, Best Supporting Actor, this deserves it. I couldn't ask for a more perfect way for this character to go out. This is an almost flawless film, with amazing action and a great story with lots of emotional moments, and a darker look at these characters. And that's the last I'll ever say about it. Maybe. Number 2. Get Out I always love going into the cinema expecting, well, you know, a pretty good film, and leaving having seen something phenomenal. And that's exactly how I felt with Get Out. This goes beyond just being a scary horror film which it definitely is, but on top of that, it's very funny in parts, really clever with the storytelling and subtle foreshadowing, and a great commentary on race. My favorite kind of horror is the less jump scary stuff, and more just stuff that gets more and more horrifying the more you think about it, and this was exactly that. Plus, I love stories where slowly throughout, you can tell that something is wrong, but you're not quite sure what, and it keeps building and building until this horrific reveal, and it was just perfectly executed here. Also, one of my least favorite parts of horror films is when characters act like idiots for no reason, or don't do anything logical, and in this film, there is none of that. Everything that I could hope would happen, happens. Basically, for me, this is the perfect psychological horror film, and I absolutely loved it. So before I get to my number one choice, here are some other films that could have made my list, but hey, there are only 10 slots. It, a well-made horror film with likable characters and some genuine scares. Fate of the Furious, so stupid that it's pretty fun to watch. Nothing exceptional though. The Big Sick, a very funny and heartfelt romantic comedy that leaves you smiling. Very nearly made my list. Split, solid thriller with one of the best performances of the entire year at the center. Guardians 2, doesn't live up to the first, but is still very funny and very creative. Wonder Woman, come for the action, stay for the great characters. Leave because the finale is not that great. Thor Ragnarok, Super funny with a great world and really good new characters, feels a bit fluffy though in terms of emotion or story. And Murder on the Orient Express, a very enjoyable mystery film with great performances, specifically from the man himself, Kenneth Branagh as Poirot. The surprises aren't that surprising and it slows down a little too much in the middle, but overall I had a very good time with it and I would totally recommend it. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. My favorite film of the year is... Here it is baby! Your killer track. Baby Driver. Yeah, no surprise there, but no film's been as big of a deal the entire year for me than Baby Driver was. I was insanely excited for this, based on the trailers and the director, like to the point where I'd watched the trailer probably more than any other trailer ever. And it somehow still exceeded my expectations. Like honestly, I thought that was going to be impossible. Edgar Wright movies strike the perfect balance of being incredibly well made and still really entertaining. Pretty much everything in this is so well done, but it's never pretentious or boring or calling attention to how clever it is. It's still entertaining and funny and exciting the entire time. I love this film because of how fun it is to watch and the story and the characters and action and all that, but I also love it because I just really respect when people put a ton of effort into something, and especially into tiny things that most people who see the film will never even notice. I really appreciate that, and there are tons of things to spot in here. I've seen this film maybe 10 times, and I still find new stuff in each watch. Beyond that though, yeah, it's an incredibly enjoyable, stylish heist action comedy with great performances and an amazing soundtrack. It's also an original movie, which is just the cherry on top. 
My parents have so many original films to talk about from when they were growing up, so I just think it's really cool when, in the current state of Hollywood, we get those kinds of films that I can talk about someday that aren't just rehashes or redos of something that came before. Glad to see it getting as much mainstream attention as it's been getting, it couldn't deserve it more. And that's all why Baby Driver is definitely my favorite film of the year, and one of my favorite films of all time. Okay, so, as I do every time at the end of the year, here's just a little wrap-up of how the year was for my channel, and what to expect next year, and a few little announcements and all that. So if you were just here for the top 10, it's done. You are free to go. Hope you enjoyed. But for those who care, stick around. So 2017 has been probably my favorite year of doing YouTube, and for the record I'm going off script for this, so just... Just bear with me on that. This year, and I've always really done this on YouTube, but this year especially, I feel like I really did what I want to do. Like, it's not like I ever did what I didn't want to do. But like, this year especially, I feel like I can just... I don't know, I feel more creative. I feel like I branched out creatively. And I'm, I'm, I'm still wanting to do more creative stuff. Like, I still want to change up my content a little bit so it's more unique, I guess. Um, I'm still working on that. And that's one of my goals for 2018. And really just refine my content. Although I'm... I'm really happy with where it is, and I have been for a while. Not a ton has changed since 2016, I'm, I'm still just really happy with what I'm making, and I'm really happy that people uh, seem to still be enjoying it. This year definitely slowed down in terms of like uh, subscribers and views compared to last year, but the thing that I thought was great about this is that I didn't really care, which is, uh, that's always been like a really big part, of, obviously it's still a big part, but this year I feel like I cared less about like how many subs I'm getting, just more like do I like what I'm making? I, I know that sounds like really cheesy, but but it's true. Um, and I think that's, uh, people uh, often ask me like, what's your advice for starting a YouTube channel? That is the best advice I could give. Don't worry about like the subs, worry about the subs a little bit. Everyone, everyone's gonna do that. You know, that's just natural. It's, of course it's great when you, you have a good week or whatever, but if you like what you're doing, then you're on the right path. Also this year, a big part of feeling like I'm doing more creative stuff and kind of branching out was starting my own podcast, which is uh, over on uh, the channel on YouTube, which I always link at the end of my videos. I, I don't know. I'm always just really scared taking risks on YouTube, I guess. Like when I, when I try new things, not even like super new things, but just like, yeah, when I branch out a bit, I'm always kind of terrified that like everyone will hate it. No one will like it. And people have been so so nice about the podcast. People really like it. At least it, it, it seems that way. <laughs> Maybe everyone's just being really polite. I don't know. But uh, that's just, it's so awesome. Because it's just, it's something I thought one day, I was like, that would be a lot of fun. I would enjoy doing that. And I think people would enjoy listening to it. And then I, I did it and people like it. It's, um, it's, it's really cool. This year was pretty awesome for me on YouTube. As far as next year, let's see. Again, I, I hope to make my content even better. Just, you know, work on a few things, work on, you know, some major things, trying to add different stuff into my videos, and then some minor things that maybe some people don't notice, some people do, of like, just like, timing in editing. It's quite important in like, the flow of a video, so I'm trying to really work that out. I got a new microphone for Christmas, so if that doesn't work, the audio quality will stay like this, which I think is pretty okay. But if it does work, if it actually works out, then hopefully the audio quality sounds a lot better next time you hear me. So that's exciting. Next year in terms of videos, uh, it's going to be some more of the stuff that you know, you know, best and worst, reviews, trailer breakdowns, uh, talking about superhero stuff and movie stuff in general. Uh, I'm also going to be continuing the podcast, maybe doing a few new things over there, trying out some new stuff. I'm also going to be doing some more, some, not a lot, but like some slightly different content here, or maybe not not in terms of like content, but in terms of what I'm talking about. Like, I really want to do a review of The Office, which I know is not going to get a lot of views because that's not really what I generally talk about, but it's just, it's a thing I love and I want to talk about it. So I expect to see that at some point once I rewatch the show again. Also, and the big thing, hopefully, I hate making promises that maybe I can't keep, but I, I think I will. I'm, I've been working on it for a while, so I better. An MCU chronology video, my most popular video. People really love it. Um, I'm doing another one for Infinity War. It's uh, it's gonna be huge. It's gonna be an, an enormous video. <laughs> it is uh, gonna be long and hopefully great. <laughs> I've been working on it for a while, and I really hope it turns out well. And I think it will. I'm really excited for that to come out. That'll probably be around Infinity War if everything works out. Um, I'm really excited for people to see that for people to see that. This is what happens when I go off script. Now, just one last thing. I never really do shout outs for people. Um, it's not because I'm trying to be mean, but it's just, you know, once you give one person a shout out, then you have to give everyone a shout out, and then eventually it's just a video of shout outs. So that's why I don't really do that in general. 
But real quick, I just want to point you in the direction of a certain channel. My friend Yana has a YouTube channel. It's called Yana Stipak. Uh, there's a link down below. Uh, on the channel, she does fun artsy vlog type videos and she puts a lot of effort into them and she really likes doing it and it would mean a lot to me if you go over to her channel and check it out and maybe subscribe if you like it. She didn't ask me to do this or anything, I'm just doing this because I know how much she puts into her videos and I know it can be hard starting on YouTube and also I genuinely think the videos are great. So yeah, link down below, go ahead and check that out. Alright, so thank you all for a great 2017, I'm hoping to step things up even more in 2018 and I'll see you in the new year.